Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's great to be here talking about one of my favorite subjects today, how to create a global network. It's a great, great uh, subject, especially because if you do it well, it really impacts the quality of your life. You are bringing in great people into your life, great experiences, great opportunities, and I really wish that at least, uh, at least one small thing from this lecture, each one of you will be able to take and use and uh, maximize the, the personal potential in your life. So let's start. Um, the first thing I want to talk about, and, and I think this should be very intuitive to some of you, is why do we need networking? So I think uh, it's very intuitive to know that uh, we need a network in order to uh, get business opportunities and in order sometimes to get the right position in the right place. We need a network. We need to know people that can help us make shortcuts. But what else? Well, it's very common to say these days, your network is your net worth, right? The people in my network, their influence, their capabilities, their talents, their connections can also be used for my personal purposes if we have a good relationship. If we are keeping a good relationship, I can use people in my network that have their own network and their own assets in their network to increase my own personal success. So this translates very well when you look at mutual friends on LinkedIn, for example. A lot of people offer you to be your friends, and you look if you have any mutual friends with, right? So if they don't, maybe you don't accept them. If you do, but maybe it's people you don't like so much, then you don't accept them. But if you have mutual contacts that are people that you appreciate and admire, you will be more willing to, to accept that new person. So other than that, we're also talking about influence in social media. The people that will comment on your, on your content the people that will reshare your content. Those people matter. If you are looking for leads, if you're looking for influence on social media uh, for your sales efforts, for your marketing efforts, in order to create the organization image of some sort, this thing has a lot of weight. And the people that will uh, engage with your profile are significant. So we want to create influence, we want to have uh, influential friends, this is all uh, great and clear, but I want to mention also one more thing. When I was uh, younger, we started talking about the globalization uh, uh, trends that are happening. Now, the, the world didn't really change, it was always round, and people always lived in uh, pretty much the same countries. The thing that changed is our ability to interact with one another. The thing that changed is technology. Is, is the communication, it's the way we travel, we can fly much more for, for a, a cheaper price these days. So we can really use the fact that the world uh, became much more, other parts of the world became much more accessible to us in order to interact with people from other parts of the world. And we can also put them and get them into our network, which can be very, very helpful, especially if you are looking for a global career. If you are looking to explore the world during your career and not just necessarily stay in one country, this is something that is essential for you. You need to, you need to understand it, live it, and enjoy the fact that you are a citizen of a very global world. So one last thing I want to mention before we go the, into the principles of networking is that the network is not only, not only there to help you at times where there is opportunities knocking on the door. A network can also be a safety net sometimes. When you are fired, when your company gets acquired and your new boss is someone that you don't like, okay, or someone that doesn't like you, which is even worse. So you want to have people in your network that can, get, that can help you in those situations, that can make life maybe a bit easier for you when these type of challenges coming and nobody anticipated them. And your network can definitely do that for you. So what it comes down to, just to close that issue of what is networking, we understand now that networking is a way of life. It's a way of life that will enable you to maximize your personal and your professional potential with the people you meet along the way. You are traveling a lot, you are going to restaurants, you are going to bars, you are meeting friends, you are socializing with work in, uh, when you go to school, uh, when you go to different events, lectures, and in all those places, there are people. 
Those people along the way, with all the different uh, values that we mentioned about networking, can help you maximize your personal life, your personal goals, and your professional goals as well. So now let's move into how we do it. How do we actually build and maintain a global network of contacts? So they're, they're basically to build and maintain such a network, it's a combination of principles and techniques. Today, we don't have time to talk about the techniques. Techniques also require practice, which is what we do in a lot of workshops that we host with different companies. What I wanna to focus today is something that you guys can take out of it, is the principles. The principles of conducting networking. So the first one, first principle we have, in order to be effective in our networking effort, is we have to be open. We have to be open to meet new people. When we're standing in line for a show, if we are standing in line and all we want to do is use our smartphone, we can use our smartphone. But if we are open to meet new people, and if we think that this show that we are going to, because it's interesting for us, is a high quality show, and we think that probably the people around us are people that are maybe, uh, you know, birds of, of the same feather. Maybe, maybe we think that these people are people that we want to interact with, and for sure, we don't know who is standing in the line with us. Maybe there is someone standing in the line with us that actually has the solution to a problem we have or has the connection to a place we want to get into. We need to be open. If we are open to meet new people, new people are coming into our lives. If we are open during the conversation with them and we are open to learn about new ideas, we are open to hear about new thoughts, about uh, new types of, uh, of uh, solutions that we haven't heard of before, and then we can really gain and we can really grow both our network and our personal experience. So moving on to the second, uh, to the second principle, the second principle is generosity. Generosity is important. Why is it important? When you are generous towards someone, First of all, you are positioning yourself very, very high. We call it the winner's generosity. When I'm giving a compliment to someone, that someone feels good. He feels great because I just complimented them. But I'm also looking good now because I had the confidence to give that person a compliment and to feel great about it and to really make him feel great about it. So, Generosity is essential, and generosity is kind of an easy thing when you're in the beginning of your path, but as you grow with your career and you go higher, you, you, uh, you uh, climb the ladder uh, and make rank, and suddenly you have a secretary, and suddenly you don't have that much time to talk to anyone, and you can't do favors to everyone that asks, those are the places where you might miss opportunities. Those are the places where you are actually closing yourself. We just talked about openness. Generosity keeps us open in the long run. It keeps us in the, in the, right, uh, in the right mindset to help other people, to do favors. And I can tell you that to do favors is definitely something that helps you getting people into your network. It helps you make that relationship last longer and maintain it. So the next thing I want to talk to you about is the strong impact of unfrequent relationships. We all know those relationships. It's those relationships where after two months of not talking to each other, we pick up the phone and we just continue like nothing happened. And then those two months, as life become more complicated, we get married, we have kids, we have other responsibilities, those two months become two years, and then two years, we pick up the phone, we continue to talk like nothing happened, like we just talked yesterday. Catching up, everything feels great, the love is there. So we want to have as many relationships like that as possible. And we want to make sure that with people that can help us maximize our personal and professional potential, for sure we are managing those relationships. So how can we do it? How can we keep those relationships alive? So a very easy thing to do is to use social media, to comment once in a while, uh, to say how gorgeous people are. We can also call on birthdays and holidays and so on. One thing I like to do also is to call and consult. I think this also keeps our conversation with my network. It keeps our conversation very professional. When I have a friend in some market far away, remote from me, and, and then I have an opportunity in that market, I always like to call him, ask what's going on in the market. Do you think it's a good opportunity? This always helped me keep the personal relationship and also keeps it, keep it in a professional context. So you can always call to consult. 
One more thing I want to say about unfrequent relationships is that people don't always remember what you said, but they always remember how you made them feel. So even when we talk about people that we are talking with now and then the next time we're going to talk with is probably a few months from now or even a year or more, it's always important that every person that comes in contact with you comes in contact with you and leaves with a great feeling. It's essential. That feeling that they will feel after you guys break contact is the same feeling that will be waiting for you next time you will need them. So the next principle I want to talk to you about is technology. Technology actually made it easier for us to, to network. Uh, there, there is a lot of different tools today. And uh, if we're talking about uh, Facebook and Instagram and other social media, there is a lot of those uh, all around us, and we can use it to keep the relationship and to keep it alive. But what I want to say is that there's also more advanced technology these days. You can also automate some of your keeping uh, in touch processes, for example. Some people that you want to communicate, let's say, on a bi-weekly basis, you can make sure it happens. If you have a goal of meeting new people, and you know how to target those people, you can use some of those digital tools that are on the screen now to use those tools in order to reach those people and create efficient, automated introductions and get them into your network. If it's important for you, for example, to get into a specific market, so you need people from a certain location, or if it's important for you to have people from a certain role or a certain job title, that it's important for you to create that community of customers or that community inside your network of people that you can go to, you can do it with these tools and with a lot of other tools that are out there today. And I definitely think that using technology for networking is an essential. It became basically the, the starting point. So the next issue I want to talk to you about is influencers. We all know who these people are. Influencers are the people that influence the most amount of people in our social area. These people are the people that can, you know, cut corners. They can help us get that ticket. They can help us get that job. They can get to anyone. They are the people that have the most amount of contacts inside your network. So I want to tell you two things about influencers. One, try to be one. Being an influencer is great. Having a lot of influence has a great impact on your personal and professional life. It's definitely, it's definitely interesting to have a lot of people in your life, a lot of people connected to you. Uh, it brings a lot of information your way. This is great. Second thing, if you're unable to be one, at least connect with one. And then when you connect with one, what is the first thing you need to do? Well, the first thing is you need to do them a favor. Because this is the currency that they speak best. If you do a favor to an influencer and then he owes you one, that's the place where you want to be. Because those people can get you, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of different targets. So moving on to the sixth principle and the last one, we want to keep an active social life. Guys, listen, it's very, very difficult to network from your living room. I'm sorry, it's not going to work. If you guys want to network, if you really want to build a strong, personal, professional network of people in your life that have impact on your life, you need to go out there. You need to go out there and you need to speak with them, be open, be generous, maintain the relationship. I can't tell you what interests you. You need to find it. You need to find the right events, the right activities, and the right places where you can get engaged and create that network. So before we finish, the last slide I want to talk to you about is the challenges that you might run into when you decide to go and make that action and take that leap to build your network. So the first thing that you might say, if you're part of a sales organization, it doesn't bring me any money. Salespeople are always focused on the money. Now, we need to look at networking as a long-term investment. You can never know how much value you're going to get out of it, and you can never know when it's going to come. But what, what I can assure you is that if you do it correctly, you will get a lot, and it will, will happen shortly. The next thing, the next challenge, is that people say, listen, I don't have opportunities. I don't have opportunities to meet with other people. I keep going to the same social places and the same events. Well, guys, this is up to you to go out of your comfort zone. And you have great technology today to assist you to find those new events and those new spaces where you haven't been. And the last changes, 
the last challenge, I'm sorry, and this is one that really hurts for me personally in my stomach. The last challenge is that people say, listen, Liron, it's simply not me. I'm not that person to go there and talk and do that moves and smile and engage and ask questions. And I want to say, listen, it's okay if it's not you. But if you're going to defend your weaknesses, you are going to get to keep them. If you are going to say it's not me, you have to understand it has a price. You are not going to have a network. You are not going to have those people to go to a time of need, a time of crisis. And if something great happens and you want to take advantage of that great thing and leverage it, you will have very few opportunities of people to do it with. Thank you very much for listening. We talked about what would be the principles to build and maintain a global network. And I think that these principles that we talked about are a great way to make your life colorful, diverse, and very, very interesting. Thank you very much for joining me tonight.